12 and those who are online. And we take this wonderful day to let everybody know that Jesus is Lord. And we give him the praise and we celebrate the Lord and those who are in the house of the Lord. Let us put our hands together as we welcome those who are online. Thank you, worship team. Glory be to God. And I want to take this opportunity also to welcome that those who are in here today. If you're here for the first time, we truly appreciate you. And if it's not your first time, but you haven't been here for a while, we celebrate you too. Glory be to God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Put your hands together. Give Jesus praise. I know, I know it's cold, but I want us to give the Lord praise. Our hearts are warm. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 It's good to see every one of you. Thank God for another Sunday. It's good to see you, Jazz. And it's, it's amazing to see you, to see Harrison and everybody. May God bless you for coming. We appreciate you all. Amen. Somebody say amen, amen. amen, amen. And um, I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is ready. Thank you so very much, uh, uh, musicians. And thank you for blessing us. I would like us to share the Word of God this afternoon, and I believe that the Spirit of the Living God is with us here today. And something extraordinary is getting ready to happen in our lives. Amen. Amen. How many came expecting something from the Lord? How many expecting something from the Lord? You know, last, last Sunday, uh, I was sharing with us on something that I felt uh, so strongly led in my spirit to share last Sunday. And in my spirit, I feel the same Word brewing within my spirit. But I'm just going to go as the Spirit of the Lord gives me direction. We talked last week about how to be God-minded on the inside. Come on, somebody. We talked about how to be God-minded on the inside. Or how to be God-inside-minded. And I believe the days that we're living in, we're living in the days that everybody got to know who they are in Christ. And we got to know what we carry and whom we carry in our lives. Otherwise, Christianity will never make any sense. I see a lot of us around the world, we're surrounded by so many obstacles that we cannot deal with. Because maybe in one way or the other, we have been trying to struggle to deal with those things for so long. But I want to let you know that we are in a time that God is going to make things flow. Because His children are getting to a place of understanding who they are and establishing themselves in the truth of the gospel. And um, I was talking to us this morning during the prayer line at five o'clock this morning, um, I was sharing also about preparing for persecution that is coming. You'd never find uh, the church or the ministers of the gospel talking about this part because we are thinking of not scaring the people. Yeah, that's it. And to tell the people there is something that is coming. But I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not, this is not about scaring anybody, but the truth is there is persecution coming. Let me put it this way. We are living in the days where persecution is already at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we got to be God-minded on the inside. we got to know who we are. Because we are being faced with persecution. The word of the Lord said, in the last days will be difficult times. Perilous times will come. And how do we know that we are living in last days? Because we are seeing those difficult times. Those perilous times that we are dealing with different situations. A lot of people, whenever you begin to talk about persecution, 
They begin to find a way of escape. We will say, oh, well, the rapture would have taken place, so we will go. Before the rapture takes place, there will be the beginning of things that we, we're going to be encountering. Already some people are facing difficulties to travel, almost everybody. Because they will not let you to go on the plane unless you have a vaccine. They will not let you do some sudden things unless you have a vaccine. We, we've had countries like in Europe, in Norway, where it's, it's now being forced, it's mandatory, and everybody got to have it. And if you don't have it, then you'll be forced into it. But I'm not here this morning to bring, them, to, bring to you the message of doom. I'm here as a prophet of the Lord to give you direction and to prepare you, to let you know you must not be afraid, but you have to be prepared. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Because unless you're prepared, you're going to live in fear. You're going to live in fear, but you've got to be prepared because things are going to happen. And God wants us to be so prepared that when all these things begin to happen, we will know on how to deal with every situation without any fear or any worry at all. So what does the Word of God tell us in such a situation and a time like this? What are we to do when we are going through tough times? Because even Jesus talked about persecution in the book of Matthew. And we're going to start with that place. Matthew chapter number 5. Jesus, when he was speaking of the, you know, the preaching, which we call the Sermon on the Mount, he literally shared some things here. And he showed us what is going to happen. In Matthew chapter number 5, Matthew chapter number 5, and let us look at few verses, which is from verse number, number 9. The Bible says, God blesses those who work for peace. Then he says, for they will be called the children of peace. Then the word of God continues to say, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of God or of heaven is theirs. Now look at verse number 11. And the Bible says, I'm reading from New Living Translation just in case you are a little bit lost. It says, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be happy and be glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. Are you listening to me church? The Word of God tells us even when Jesus was talking on the Sermon on the Mount, He said, Blessed are they, are they that are persecuted for my name's sake. So in other words, brothers and sisters, we shall be persecuted for the name of the Lord. Some of you will be persecuted at your workplace. And this persecution will come in different, in different ways. Some will be at workplace. It will come from different levels. Some will be in your family where some of your family members don't agree with what you agree. They don't agree with the word of God. They don't agree with the truth that you know. And some persecution will come from the government. And I say the government, it is it's, it's clear that there will be some things that will be forced into people. And especially those who will be most targeted will be children of God. Will be for those who know the truth. Why Christians? Why you and I? Because we are the light of the world. Amen. And because we are the light of the world, the enemy, the devil will try to shut us down. 
so that the darkness can take over this world. Because without a Christian, there will be total darkness in this world. Just think of the times that they closed down the churches. What happened? Total darkness. The world became a worse place to live in without the church being active. Why? Because when we are in this world, Jesus said, as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world. So that means when the rapture comes and the church has been taken, there will be total chaos. Brothers and sisters, you never, you never want to be left behind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never want to be left behind. Because if the church is the light, and it's the one that is controlling and bringing the order, when Jesus comes and the rapture has taken place, then the church will be gone and it will be total darkness in, 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 in total chaos. And my brothers and sisters, there will be no chance. The only chance we have is now. When we can come to church, when we can read our Bibles, when we can follow the truth, this is the only time we got. And for some of us, we are still thinking we are still in the same place where we used to be. Times have changed. God's calendar has moved. We are in the times that now everybody must be careful on what you carry in you. You have to be careful to guard the truth that you have received. Because out there, the enemy is rolling like a lion and is looking whom he might devour. It's looking on, on whom is going to discourage and discredit your faith. Brothers and sisters, I just want to let you know, no matter what is happening around, no matter what the world looks like, the church still remains the light. The church still remains the light. Amen. And you and I must understand that. And begin to walk like that. Glory be to the name of the Lord God. And so, brothers and sisters, if we are going to survive, if we are going to survive the attacks and all that is going on around the world, remember they persecuted that, those who were ahead of us. They persecuted the apostles. I taught this morning on how the persecution went on the apostles. They did so bad on them. None of the apostles apart from one. John of the book of Revelation who died a natural death. Because he was old. And thank God that he lived so long to finish the book of Revelation. Otherwise if we never had him. We couldn't have had the book of Revelation. But most of them, they were killed in different places. People like Andrew went all the way to Africa in Ethiopia. And they were killed preaching the gospel, trying to plant churches. And the story said some of those like him were actually, uh, 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 you know, spared down to the ground and they, they, were, they were murdered. We know so many like Stephen, who the Bible says they were even, even stoned while they were still standing. They were stoned until they died. Brothers and sisters, remember people like Thomas. Thomas was killed in India, trying to preach the gospel, trying to plant churches. And they also killed him there. They stabbed him to death. There is even his grave to this day. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says, if the old apostles, if the old prophets that were ahead of us went through these things, why do you think that we will not be able to face this situation? We are not going to go through these situations. And I know that it is scary when we begin to talk about this. Because we want to be told everything is going to be alright. We are coming out and all is well. But my brothers and sisters, I tell you, definitely this is what the word of God says. That these things are going to happen. And we have no excuse. We have no, you know, ways on which we will escape them. 
The only way we escape is for you to compromise and to be a hypocrite. If you're going to be a hypocrite and you don't want to speak the truth, you don't want to preach Jesus, they will not touch you. But Jesus said, if you deny him on earth, he will deny you before the presence of his father. No, he's going very quiet in here. If you deny him, he will deny you in the presence of his father. And some of us, if we are worried and we are saying, oh, what if things now we, we you know, we're still waiting kind of, let me, let me put it this way. Some of us, we are not even compromising or we, we started saying, oh, I'm not taking that, that vaccine. I'm not worried about it. it it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm standing strong and all that. Probably we are only standing strong because it hasn't been heated seven times like they did for, for Daniel. But the moment he's heated seven times, and they said, this is what you're going to get. If you're not going to take it, you're not going to have medication. Maybe you have been prescribed a medication that you have to use for life. And then you're told that the medication is not going to be there. You're not going to have access to your medication. Are you still going to stand? Or are you going to say now, because, 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 because of what is going on, I have to just agree and give in. So many a times the question is, are we not giving in because the opportunity has not come? Or are we not giving in because we are faithful? Because it's either you are not giving in to the situations and the circumstances surrounding us because you are faithful to the Lord. Or either you're not giving in because the opportunity has not come yet. But when that opportunity comes and now you have to give up everything for your faith, how strong are you going to be? Look at your neighbor and say, how strong are you going to be? Now you can tell me I will be very strong. But when you see a sword coming, are you going to still say, Jesus, I love you? When they said deny him or we kill you, are you still going to say, yes, you better kill me? Or are you going to say, oh, well, you know, you know, you know, please, you, let me put Jesus on the side. You know, Peter did it. So it's not going to be the first time some people will do it. Peter said when he saw persecution, when he saw his Lord being persecuted, arrested. The Bible says Peter, when he saw, he started going backwards. I don't know this man. I don't know. They, and even there was a little girl that was a, 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 a maid there. A servant. She said, but we, we know you. You look like him. You even talk like him. You've been working with him all the time. How come that you say you don't know him? Oh, Peter said, I swear, I don't know this guy. Anymore. I don't know him. And the master was taken in front of Peter when he was still denying him. Saying, I don't know him. Why? Because he was afraid of persecution. He was afraid of the sword. Not only Peter, but look at all the disciples at that particular moment. None of them was really ready to go all the way with Jesus. Only, only John remained standing there and he saw the master being killed. And the Lord talked to him and he said, John, look after your mother. He was talking about because he was, uh, he, was, he, was, he was handing over his mom to John. Whom the Bible says John took her. And took her to Ephesus where he planted one of the largest churches. And she died while he was watching over her. And they buried her there at the church of Ephesus. But my brothers and sisters when all these things happen. Who says that I know whom I have believed. I am not going to compromise. Are you sure you're going to say that? Or are you going to say, oh, well, I really, you know, when, when things get bad like this, you know, we've we got to fight for ourselves. 
I've had people who say, you know, uh, God helps those who help himself. So, bro, you better help yourself. <laughs> huh? But, but I tell you what, you are helpless without God. Amen. I don't know what you can do to help yourself. There's no way you can help yourself. So, brothers and sisters, all these things are not fairy tales. These are things that happened in the past. It happened... To people like Isaiah the prophet, you know what? How he died? Isaiah the prophet was boiled in oil. How, how how would you like to be boiled in oil? Come on, somebody. How would you like to be stoned to death? How would you like to be thrown into the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? How would you be? How would you like to be cast into the den of lions because of your faith? But I thank God for those boys that were so strong in their faith. They would not disown God for nothing. When you read Daniel, Daniel said when the decree was already set. Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10. When the decree was already set up by the king. Daniel 6, verse 10. The Bible says, and Daniel went home. What did he go home to do? He went to his secret place of prayer. And the Bible says, and he went to the upper room. The, the, the same thing that they were telling him, if you do it, we will kill you, is the same thing that he went to do. They said there is nobody, according to, to the laws of the menace and the passions, that is allowed to worship any other god apart from the god of the king, the statues that the king is going to erect. But when Daniel learned the law has been signed, he went home and he knelt as usual in his upstairs room, in his upper room, with its windows open toward Jerusalem, the city of peace, Jerusalem. And he prayed how many times? Three times a day, just as he had always done giving thanks to his God. And remember, they told him, now, this is the thing that we are persecuting you for. So don't you dare do that. And he kept on doing it. And he went and continued doing it. And what happened? Then the officials went together to Daniel's house. And found him praying. Did I say the government will, will even bring persecution? These were officials from the government. They were sent to come to the house of Daniel. They come to Daniel's house and found him praying and, uh, and asking God help, for God's help. And what happened? So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. They said, did you not sign a law? And on that law, that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And the king said, yes, I did. What decision stands? It is an official law of the Medes and the Persians that cannot be revoked. Keep on going. Then they told the king, that man, that man you call a Christian, that brother, huh? Kishan, that evangelist, he is now preaching on the street. He's still doing it, even though we said he shouldn't go on the street. Then they told the king, the man, Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you. And he's ignoring your law. These guys were strong, right? They didn't give, give in for anything. And the Bible says, and he's ignoring and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Look what happened. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled. And he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of his predicament. Why was he trying to get Daniel predicament when he's the one who had signed the law? Do you know why? The only thing that is going to save us in these last days is prayer. Amen. Amen. We were looking at some some traveling, um, um, you know, uh, 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 laws of different countries this morning. And they said, of this particular country, you can't go without 
vaccine, you can't go in this, you can't go in that without this, you can't go. Too many things that I were introducing. And I called the family, I said, we're going to pray. And why are we praying? Because it's only prayer that is going to make a way where it seems to be known. Amen. Amen. For those who don't like prayer, you better learn to pray. Amen. Before it's too late. Amen. For those who just, you know, when they hear prayer, they boycott coming to church. Because they said, that church they pray too long. Oh my goodness. A day is coming that nobody will tell you to pray. Have you ever been in a situation that you don't know where the answer will come out from and what to do? And the only thing you try to pray, there's not even vocabulary in your mouth. All you can say is, uh, uh, <laughs> that time is coming. The only thing you do is groaning because of the pain. Now can you imagine the king who set the agreement to kill the people that are going to serve any other god is the same king that is, is troubled the whole night. Why is he in trouble? Because somebody is praying. Amen. You know what is going to sustain us in this situation, church? I'm telling you, is prayer. If you don't pray, I think you'll be the very first one to give in. We have, from, from when did we start the, the online prayer? Uh, I think 20, 2019? 2019 of November. There are some people don't even know about it. Yet there are people that since the 19th of November, 2019, November, when we started, they have never stopped, not even once to be in the presence of God. Every day, 5 a.m. in the morning. We're waking up and crying to the Lord. Why do we have to gather people? Not, not just in Bedford. We have people from all the people that we've never met. Pastor Clement, we've never met some people from Australia. Never seen them. We've never met some people from America. There are people from Turkey, Germany, um, you know, all around the world. They are all online praying. Never met them. But you know what? We have one objectivity. We know that we are living in dangerous times. And without prayer, we cannot make it. It doesn't matter what country you are in. There were days we used to pay our way out to go to any country. They tell you, oh, you, your visa is going to be delayed. You can't do this. You say, oh, well, I've got money. And you pay like maybe 200 or 300 to get a premium for your visa to be done. Now it's not a visa. You have to have a certificate for vaccine. You have to have something else and something else. And if you don't have one of those things, you are not allowed even to go. Some people, you know, at the airport, I remember, uh, you know, some people will get to the airport and they will call and say, Bishop, I can't travel. They, 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 I was found, I have COVID, so I can't, I can't fly. I was found that I can't travel because of this and this and this. All this complication, there's no way to pay in your way. There's no way to pay out your way now. The only way to pay out your way yeah. is right now. Yeah. 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 Are we going to pray through this? Or are we going just to sit and say, Oh, well, it is what it is. The government is doing this. The government is doing this. And we are best talkers. I'm telling you, Christians. We are like parrots. You know what parrots do? Anybody knows what parrots do? If you say, Jesus, the parrot says, Jesus. If you say, come out, it will still repeat exactly what you are saying. From 2019, we've been saying what the government is saying. You say we are going down, we say we are going down. If they say there will be a lockdown, we, we say we are we're going to have a lockdown. If they say this is going to happen, we, we, it's like we are the one helping them out. We have become more serious than the media itself. Preaching all the things that they are saying you can't do. And we are always online trying to find out what other law they said. Some people are depressed because they sit on TV all the time. Look at uh, from 2019, there were people who were so depressed they couldn't even come to church. Because they were, they were afraid that even the pastor coming to their house was an issue. Man of God, I used to hug you. Now I can't even come closer to you. Oh my Lord. 
That's what has been happening, my brothers and sisters. But I tell you, there's something that we have to understand. That we are not going to dance their music. We go, we're not going to agree with all the systems are saying. Because we've got to be transformed from the systems of the world. Amen. And understand, God is the solution to all this. Amen. And let us not talk and you know keep on preaching what they are saying. The Bible says when they say, there is a what? There is destruction. When they say that things are going down, we will say there is a lift up. Amen. There is a lifting up in the house of Amen. God. Because we have a God who will never fail. I'm telling you, your business, your plans, your everything may fail. But this God will never fail. Amen. That's why we have to depend on him in prayer. Amen. The Bible says, in the evening, men went together to the king and said, Your majesty, you know according to the law of the ministry and the passion, the law of the king signs to be uh, no law that the king signs can be changed while the king is still wandering. What am I going to do about this guy? Maybe he had dreams that night. Releasing Daniel. Alright. He probably had dreams. And he couldn't sleep. And keep on going. Verse 17. Is it 7? Are we alright? Then the Bible says. So at last the king gave orders. For Daniel to be arrested. He had no choice. And thrown into the den of lions. And the king said to him, may your God, now look, the king surrendered, he says now, now if you have been praying Daniel, it's your God now. It's not about me, I'm not going to save you now. I, I, as much as I wanted to save you, may your God save you. The Bible says, may your God whom you serve faithfully rescue you. Even the king himself knew Daniel was serving his God faithfully. The king knew Daniel was praying three times a day. The Judaism people, they pray, the Hebrew people pray three times a day. The Muslims pray five times a day. I don't know how many times the Hindu pray, but I know they pray, for, they pray for whatever they pray. But the question is, how much times do you pray as a Christian? Is there anybody at all that knows the power in prayer? The Bible says, and the stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the dead. Then the king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of, the, of his nobles. So that no one could rescue Daniel. In other words, if you come, you see that seal, you know you have no way to get Daniel out. Look at what happened. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. Can you imagine? This is a pagan king, cannot sleep. Why? You know, why in the world this king is going to spend the night fasting? A pagan king. He wasn't a Christian. How is he spending the whole night fasting? Because somebody has been calling on the name of the Lord. And he has no peace. You know when, what prayer does? When we call on the name of the Lord continuously, without ceasing, even the laws that the government is trying to establish that will not stand. You know, the problem is that you say, we are only the minority. Who called you? Who told you you are minority? The Bible says, great I see that is in you, but he that is in the world. You are not a minority. You are a majority with God. Come on, somebody. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the whole night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. He refused that night to go to the theater, movie theater. He had his movie theater away and he takes himself every night. That night he could not eat, he could not drink, he could not do anything. He could not sleep. He fasted his sleep. Why? Because of Daniel, one man, a Hebrew boy who has come from another nation. Because his God is greater than any other gods in the whole of Babylon combined. Very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. Why in the world is he even worried about it? He could have said, well, we cast that boy out. We forget about him. He's all finished. And you know, he woke up in the morning. Do you know why he woke up to go to the den line? Because he knew God would have saved this guy. He has been faithful in his prayer. 
When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel! Daniel, servant of the living God! Was your God whom you served so faithfully able to rescue from the lion? And listen, Daniel answered, Yes, King, I'm still in here. Long live the king. Look at verse 22. The Bible says, My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. The angel of the Lord came into the prison because of the prayer of Daniel, not because he prayed a dangerous or a quick microwave prayer because the persecution had come. No, he was living a life of prayer. He breathed prayer every day. He prayed every day. He called on the name of the Lord every day. Some of us, we are praying and when we begin to see things are, are going wrong, we say, that is the prayer of fear. That is not tongues of the Spirit because you are finding a way out. All these other times you are sitting at home, lying in your bed, oh, I'm watching Bishop online. Oh, I don't have to go in church. Now the situation, the situation has come. Why do you want to go, want to put God to be like a sugar daddy? You only want him when it pleases you. We've made God sometimes to be like a vending machine. I just put a coin, trrr, coffee comes out. That's not the God we serve. We've got to love him in and out of season. We've got to be passionate for the truth, passionate for his word, passionate to pray, crying unto the name of the Lord God. And saying, God, I'm not going to stop praying. I'm not praying because I want money. I'm not praying because I want marriage. I'm not praying because I want something. I am praying because I want to keep my relationship with you going. My brothers and sisters, that's what saved Daniel. That's what kept him out of the problem. For he had trusted in his God. The Bible says the king was overjoyed. Woo! This is a worldly king. I'm talking about the officials in the government. They have seen your God and they cannot do anything about you because the Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. The Bible didn't say the weapon will not be formed, but the Bible says the weapon will not prosper. How is it not going to be prosper? How is it not going to prosper? Because when you call on the name of the Lord, when you stay in prayer, when you stay in the presence of God, no matter what the devil is cooking against you, greater is he that is in on your side. No weapon formed against you will prosper. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the living God will lift up a standard against it. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 The king was overjoyed and that Daniel be lifted from the dead. He said, come on, bring Daniel out. And then not a scratch was found, and not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Oh my God, oh my God. Can you imagine using the lions as his pillow and his mattress? He was down there saying, well, um, it's still my normal prayer. On top of a lion. So the problem that was meant to destroy him, he was able to be above it because he prayed. The situation that is meant to destroy you, you're going to be above it. I said none of you will be destroyed because you know the word of God. Because you're going to stand on the truth. Because you will stand in prayer. I believe that you will stand in prayer. And say, it doesn't matter what they bring against me. I know my Redeemer lives and I will stand. I will protect my faith. I will stand strong. Because there are days that sometimes you feel like giving up. And then the king gave orders uh, to arrest the man who had maliciously accused Daniel. Can you imagine now? This guy, because he's been trained, not even his, his body had been scratched from the lion. And the, 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 the king said, instead, go and arrest the people who actually put it. Why is he arresting them? Well, he's the one who gave the orders. He's the one who even 
saved. That he should be killed. But now he said, go and arrest them. Why? Because they maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lions of death. That the lions dead themselves. Those who were against him, they were thrown in the lions dead. The Bible says, along with their wives and their children. Can you imagine all your enemies that have been standing against you saying you're not going to go anywhere? They are the ones who are facing it now. Them and their children who are being cast into the den of lions. Daniel escaped because of his prayer life. He had, he had them thrown into the den of lions along with their wives. Their children, the lions, leaped on them and tore them apart before even they hit the floor of the death. See the difference. See the difference. Well, they did not do that to Daniel. Daniel had so much relationship with the lion of the tribe of Judah. And now there are these lions that he has to make friends with them because of his relationship with that God that he served. But you look at these other ones because they did not do what Daniel prayed. They were not part of Daniel's lifestyle. They all perished. Before they hit the ground, their babies were being eaten up. Their wives were being torn into part. And that's what I'm going to let you know. But the word of God tells us this as I close. Look at what the word of God says. James chapter 5. And I want us to look at verse number 13. James chapter 5 from verse number 13. I, I want you to open your Bible and we'll close with this. Daniel chapter 5. Mali gross came by the house. The Bible says, Are any of you suffering hardship? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Now, can we try another version? Let's try a different version, please. Something like King James Version or New King James Version, whatever you got. Look at the next. The, 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 the Bible says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Now, let us amplify. Let's, let's see all of them. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, let's amplify Let's see what he says. The Bible says, Is anyone among you afflicted, afflicted or ill-treated? Look at your numbers. Have you been ill-treated? <laughs> Suffering evil. Contemporary English, it says, Is there anyone among you that is in trouble? Let him pray. Okay. I don't know whether we have contemporary English, which says, Is there anyone among you should who is in trouble should pray. He should pray. Is there anyone glad at heart? He should sing praises. My God. Look at your neighbor. Say, are you in any trouble? With the court? With the doctors? With your workplace? Are you in any trouble at all? The Bible says the answer is pray. Oh, they are telling us if we don't vaccinate by the end of this month, we will lose the job. What is the answer? Pray. Anybody, is there anybody in trouble? Let them pray. But I, I, I want to say to you, don't use prayer as the way of escape. Use prayer as a lifestyle to talk to God. So that when that day comes, it's, it's natural that God will save you. Amen. But this terrible stuff happens to people that now that they, they, they haven't been doing anything about God, and they haven't had time for God, they don't give, they don't pray, they don't read the word of God. Now the problem has come and they are thinking, Oh, the whole night they can't sleep. And you wake up, the problem is still there. Because God knows. God knows your prayer is not real. Your prayer is only because of the situation that you're going through. Is anyone among you afflicted or evil, you know, suffering evil? He should pray. If anyone glad at heart, he should sing praise to God. Now let's go to verse number 17. Verse 17. Look at verse 17. Then the Bible says in verse 17, Elijah was a human being. Somebody say Elijah was a human being. With a nature such as we have. With feelings, affections, and constitution like ours. And he prayed honestly. For it not to rain. And no rain fell on the earth. For three and six months. Glory be to God. For three years and six months. 
And then the Bible says, verse, verse 17, please, verse 17. And the Bible says, and Elijah was human being and nature like us. Now, you may say, Bishop, he prayed and it did not rain. But that was Elijah, I'm not Elijah. At least I can say I'm not Elijah, but he had a nature like me. Amen. I can relate to that. I may not relate to his prophetic ministry. I cannot relate maybe to his powerful utterances that he will utter and God will answer suddenly. But I can relate to the nature. He had a nature like me and you. But the Bible says, and he prayed. Look at verse 18. He said, he prayed first of all, verse 17, that there wouldn't be rain for three and a half years. And there was no rain. And then he prayed again, and the heavens supplied the rain. And the land produced its crops as usual. This was a human being. But the Bible says he understood the power of prayer. Is there anybody that understands the power of prayer? Brothers and sisters, there is some secrets that I see there very quickly that actually made the prayer of Elijah effective. Because I want your prayer, when you pray, it has to be effective. The Bible gives us fundamental keys to make your prayer effective. Number one, the Bible says the heart felt. Set your, the Bible says his prayer was heartfelt. Somebody say heartfelt. Set, your, set yourself to pray like this often. Honestly, fervently, passionately, and intensely. And watch yourself move from one level of glory to another. As you walk in the supernatural of every day of your life. Number two, the Bible says the prayer was continued. Was continued. So how do I make the power available? You may ask. The answer is in James 5.16 where we read. The honest. The honest, heartfelt, and then continued. So the prayer has to not be only heartfelt, it has to be continued. And heartfelt means it has to come from your spirit. Yeah. You know there are prayers that we make, we are just rabba, 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 for two hours. But you don't even move a fly. That is not a heartfelt. I will show you the heartfelt. The heartfelt prayer is the one that is Romans 8, verse 26. It said, with groanings that cannot be uttered. The prayer that is coming directly from your spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. But now, let us continue with this verse. So the prayer has to be heartfelt and the prayer has to be continued. That's why I said you don't just pray when there is trouble. You pray all the time. The answer is in James 5, 16. The honest heartfelt, continued, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. And this does not refer to the hurried prayer. The hurried prayer, okay, the hurried prayer that we make, you know, going to work. Or the hurried prayer that we make, maybe for our food. It's much more than that. It will take more time for you to sit in the presence of God. To be able to have this continued lifestyle. No wonder the power of God was always available to Elijah because throughout his earthly ministry, he was praying. The same applies to our Lord Jesus Christ. Why Jesus was so powerful? He was always praying. Continue. So the prayer has to be heartfelt, has to be continued. Number three, the prayer has to be made out of a righteous life. Somebody say righteous life. The Bible says in, in James 5, 16 again, the honest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. Not everybody, but a righteous man. A righteous man, when they open up their mouth and they call on the name of the Lord, God answers quickly. God answers quickly. He responds to the prayers. And number four, the prayer has to be a prayer of faith. James 5, 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So the prayer of faith, if your prayer has to be powerful, has to be a prayer of faith. Brothers and sisters, most of the prayers that we make, they are not prayers of faith. They are prayers of fear or prayers of unbelief or doubt. I am praying, but I don't believe that what God is saying is going to happen. I'm only praying, but I don't know whether it's going to happen. And sometimes we go and pray for somebody. Oh, you, the person is very sick and you lay hands on them and you begin to pray for them. God heal them. 
God healed them. Then you leave that place. You go back home. And you are in your head, you are, the, 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 your mind is telling you, oh, nothing happened. Nothing happened. When you meet with the pastor, what, what happened? Did you pray for the person? Yes, I prayed. But oh, the, the way I saw the situation, it looks to be very bad. That was not prayer of faith. If really was a prayer of faith, then you should expect results. Because the prayer of faith produces all the time. Faith never fails. And Hebrews 11, 6, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you got to believe. Faith is an absolute trust in God. Faith is not substitute of something else. It's an absolute trust in God. Somebody say amen. amen. And lastly, the prayer, God bless you, the prayer of pray through the Holy Spirit. Somebody say pray, pray through the Holy Spirit. Have you ever carefully considered the fact that there is enough power in you to turn any situation around in your favor? This is what James 5.16 indicates. You can change anything because the divine power necessary to cause that change already is on the inside of you. It was deposited in you the moment you received the Holy Spirit into your life. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So the word power here refers to dynamic ability that causes changes. If you receive the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, believe you me, whatever situation it is that you're dealing with or encountering, the prayer prayed through the Holy Spirit is going to produce. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Alright, because I have mentioned Romans 8, 26, let us finish with that and I'm done. Let's finish with that. Romans 8, verse 26. Romans 8, 26. Uh, and this is what the Word of God says here. So to the Holy Spirit comes to our aid. Somebody said the Holy Spirit comes to our aid. And that is the kind of prayer you want. Where the Spirit of the Lord comes to your aid. Some of us, when we try to pray, only five minutes, ten minutes, we are tired. Do you know why? We don't have the Holy Spirit as our aid. If He's there as your aid, the word, our aid there, is the Paracletus, the one that walks alongside you to help you. It is the word, your helper. It is the word, uh, your advocate, the one that is going to speak on your behalf. So in other words, you are just there being a vessel that the Holy Spirit is using to pray. Come on, somebody. And then the Bible says, for we do not know what prayer to offer. Okay? He bears us up in our weaknesses. For we do not know the prayer to offer. Do you know when it comes to prayer, many of us are weak. The Holy Spirit will hold you up. For we do not know what prayer to offer. Nor to offer it worthily as it ought. But the Spirit himself, somebody says the Spirit himself, goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf. With unspeakable yearnings and groanings to the poadrons. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to do. Come on, somebody. Amen. So God is putting us into a place of prayer so that we can be able to deal with the situation that are coming. And the last thing that I would encourage you with, stay in the Word of God. Anybody here has ever read the Bible at least once? The whole Bible. Let me see by the show of your hand. I will, I will say to us, let us take a challenge in this January. Anybody hearing me? Let's take a challenge this January. Let's read the Bible from front to the back. Let's take it as a challenge. And where possible, read it again and again. Do you know why? You will need the word when that day comes. You will not say, oh, you know, the bishop used to preach. He used to say, oh, so and so used to say, oh, I watch on TV. Uh, Crawford Dollar used to say, oh, Morris Aruna used to say, no. There will be no time for that. Before you say Morris Aruna used to say, they cut your head off. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, the word will save you. Take the word with you. Amen. The Bible says when the apostles... They had them come and rescue. The Bible says they were full of the power of God. They were bold. They spoke out of boldness because prayer and the word gave them boldness. How do I know they stayed in the word? Because Acts chapter 2 verse 42 tells us they continued in apostles' prayer and apostolic fellowship. 
and the breaking of bread and the doctrine of the apostles daily and God made a way for them so I'm telling you we cannot escape things without the word of God you've got to know the word of God don't have to depend anymore on, on Google if you want the scripture let me go to Google and then after Google then you're forgotten again Oh, I, I woke up this morning, I feel a little bit depressed. I want to go on Facebook to see if Bishop has posted something that can encourage me. And we are living as people to be encouraged, encouraged, encouraged all the time. When are you going to encourage others? When are you going to be the one that is going to support somebody else in faith? And we can't do that without the word. And that's why we get so depleted and so empty. When you come to the church, the bishop has to be doing the pulpit ministry. You know what the pulpit ministry? Pull them from the pit. Pulpit. Pulpit. Pull them from the pit. And so I have to shout all I can to pull you out of the pit. Because the whole week you haven't even seen the Bible. You saw your Bible this morning and you went. We're going to church. Let me tell you something. If we're going to be serious, God is going to help us. Amen. Let us be serious with the Lord. Amen. Let us commit to see what God has in store this year. Amen. Stay in the Word of God. Plan it. Make a plan that every day at least I'll read a chapter. I'll read a chapter. I'll read even maybe one, 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 one book. There are some few books to start with. Start with, with short books like the Epistles of John. One chapter. Jude. One chapter. Read it all. Finish. Don't start with, with, with the psalm, which will start from Psalm 1 to Psalm 150. By the time you finish, you're already gray hair. It's very long. So start with what is quick to deal with. Amen? And when you start with that, then the rest is going to be easy for you to follow. Praise the Lord. But at least stay in the Word. Father God, I pray for your children today. I thank you for the Word of life. Strengthen everybody that is in here and those who have been watching, Lord. I thank you for their lives will never be the same again. I pray that you support each and every one of us in our faithfulness as we stand on the word. And some of us are fearful. Some of us are troubled and worried. We're not sure what is going to happen. But Father God, you gave us solution. You say, if we pray, you will answer us, O oh God. Lord God, you ask us to pray because you have the way to answer. You have asked us to pray because you can give us solution. And so we raise our expectation and our faith to you. We ask you, Lord God, our master, reveal the truth, reveal yourself to us. Help us this year as we trust you, as we stand in the world. Let your name be glorified and be honored. I pray for every person that came into this service today. And Lord, they are persecuted at work or in their families. Or even from the government. Whatever persecution that they may be encountering. I pray that the Lord God Almighty brings solutions as we pray. We call on your name. Reach out and bring solutions. We have many Christians around the world. 300 million of Christians. 300 million every day that are being persecuted for their faith. We raise our hearts to you, God. We pray for them. We pray that, Lord, you may save them. Save those who are in the Middle East. Save them that are being persecuted in India. Save those who have been persecuted in China, in Thailand, in, in, in Indonesia, and in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and all those nations of the world. And some places, Lord, in Nigeria, Northern Nigeria, where, my God, the Muslims have risen against them in Northern Sudan. God, I ask you, reach out every nation where there is no peace and grant peace. Grant peace, oh God, we pray. Bring peace, we pray, in those nations to those our brothers and sisters that are going through persecution. Lord God, I pray even that you will strengthen us that whatever we might be going through or will go through, we will not disown you. We will stand strong in our faith, knowing that, Lord God, we are victorious in you. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And
Thank you.